And welcome to the latest, the freshest episode of Sports Talk Soup, episode number nine of STS. Now I'm calling it that. Alongside Blair Glover, I am Vito Jerome Churko. And we have a guest on the line with us already in Wald Lake Western, offensive tackle in Michigan State, football commit Spencer Brown. Spencer, how are you doing, man? What's going on? I'm doing good. Hey, good to have you on, man. And, you know, really quick, I wanted to let you know I'm in the TV studio with Blair. Now, she hasn't commented yet, but I'm wearing <laughs> pink. Are you a guy that wears pink? Because only a, a few select men, it seems like, wear pink nowadays or are confident <laughs> enough to wear pink. Now, now before you answer, before he answers <laughs> this, he's, he's pretty fashionable. He I've is. seen some prom oh, photos. Yeah. I saw your prom oh, yeah. photos, by so, the way. You looked really fashionable, man. So I want man. our audience to know, whatever his answer is, let's just go ahead and take it as legit because he's pretty fashionable. He is. Okay, uh... Yeah, I wear pink sometimes. It depends on the, um, you know, the day. But, yeah, I wear pink. Well, I've seen some photos, like Blair said, from you at prom, and you look dapper. Mm -hmm. uh, more than I'm able to pull off. <laughs> but, anyways. <Okay. laughs> hey, anyways, though, what do you have planned this summer? Are you going to any football camps, any uh, big men showcases this summer? Uh, um, no, not really. I, I, I think I'm just going to just. Uh, work with my team this whole year, try to win that state championship, get in the weight room, and uh, train, and just work on my craft this whole summer. Well, awesome. Well, we'll get into Wald Lake Western, but first and foremost, a big topic that everybody wants to hear about is why the heck you chose Michigan State to go to uh, to play football at the next level. So, why is that, Spencer? Um, I just feel like it's just a big brotherhood, and I just think it's the right fit for me. Um, I mean, I'm not into all the hype and records and rankings, all that. I'm more so like the type of guy to go to the school where they love me. And I just feel as if like everybody loved me, the community, the campus, the fans, all that. And uh, I just got a great relationship with all the players, coaches, everybody up there. You know what I mean? And when I sat down with the coaches, everything just looked right. The academics, and it was close to home, so... Why not? Why not go to Michigan State? So I saw that Dwan Mathis, who was going to Michigan State originally, he flipped already to Ohio State. The Oak Park yeah. quarterback, also part of the 2019 class. Are there any yeah. factors out there, variables that could cause you to make the same decision to flip your commitment to another D1 university? No, mm -mm. I'm locked in. Yeah, you have the right fit, like and, you were saying. And I'm going to tell you, he's so locked in. I mean, you could have chosen, I guess, any other time to make this statement, but he took an official visit to U of M around February, and I think he was quoted as saying after his visit, he's a 1,000% committed to MSU. So, I, you know, I was like, could you have, I mean, any other visit? But that's okay. We're glad that you're happy with your choice, and um, that's the biggest thing, I think. Yeah. And what do you know about Mark D'Antonio so far, the head coach at Michigan State? Uh, what do I know about him? Yes, what do you know about him, and, you know, how did he help get you to Michigan State? I mean, it's just uh, plain and simple. He just keeps everything real. You know what I mean? He's not going to sugarcoat nothing. He's not going to lie to you. He's just going to keep it real. And he's, he's a coach that fights for his players. So I want a coach that's going to bat for me and, you know what I mean, put – put himself on the line. He gonna put he's gonna put everything on the line for his players. That's why they, that's that's why everybody that's why they win games because their players run will run through a brick wall for Coach D. You know what I mean? So that's why I love about him. And with all the stuff that was going on with the school, he he didn't quit. He didn't you know what I mean shy away. He didn't he wasn't flustered, none of that. He he battled with everything. So I want a coach that's gonna that's gonna come to war for me, so He's a great coach and person on and off the field, and man, I love him. And Spencer, how exciting is that 2019 football recruiting class at Michigan State that you're a part of? You have two studs coming from Belleville, and Devontae Dobbs, a big old lineman, and Julian Barnett, this great, this stud defensive back, four- and five-star dudes from Belleville High School in Michigan. And then along with yourself and other guys coming from the state and the Midwest, which Michigan State does a very good job, very solid job of recruiting in-state. So what are your thoughts and your excitement level regarding this 2019 recruiting class at Michigan State? Michigan State. Uh, I mean, from the get go, when I committed, when I committed, that was my whole thing. And I was talking to the coaches like, we're trying to um, get everybody in the state and all the best players we could get. And 
I mean, I'm just so blessed in position to where it's, uh, I, I kind of made some of that happen, and I got together with the players I committed, and we made it happen. You know what I mean? Um, and everybody sees it, too. It's not like we forcing people to do it, but it's just real real life, man. Best players in Michigan could play at Michigan State, man, but... Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of talent that's coming, and some some more talent in the state that's, that's um, that y'all need to watch out for. It's about to be Spartan dog. So I can say um, when I was kind of researching and making sure things you know on the show went well, and I represented you right on the show. I was like, Spencer is not only a football player; he's like a recruiter too. And it led me to think, in veto, if I can, Spencer. You're right. People can see your efforts out there and the support you have for MSU and that whole football squad for Class of 219. Yep. So I'm just wondering, I mean, it, it may be a little far in the future, but um, off, you know, once, say, way off into the future when football career is over, could you ever see yourself in coaching or like a recruiting on a team somewhere? Yeah, uh, eventually I want to. I want to do that. Probably uh, help the kids and get out there and coach because I, I want to stay uh, in the game as far as possible. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it, I don't know. I want to. I want to make millions. There you go. Make some big bucks, right? Yes, in the sir. NFL. Yes, sir. Now, how big of an influence, Spencer, did you have in getting Dobbs to Michigan State? Uh. I don't really. I think that was kind of Julian and, and other people. I mean, I was talking to him a little bit, but he, he was gonna make his own decision. Like everybody make their own decision. But I, I mean, I don't know. I really. I talked to him like, but I'm not about to keep begging nobody. Hey, come, mm -hmm. come, come. Like that's not how the game go. But he he saw it for himself. I mean, Coach Staten is one of the. He, well, he is the best offensive line coach. In the in the nation, and he and he see it. He he been around them. He he's already said it. Like he been up to MSU since seventh grade. So, I mean, it's already there. I don't got to say too much. That's the thing. Nobody got to say anything to convince somebody to go to that school because the kids know. Everybody knows what you, what you getting out of. They gonna keep it real. There's no sugar coating. It's none of that. Everything up, up front. And if you really want to go to a school, you can't just keep begging the guy. I mean, the guy really wants to go to your school, right? Well, he should just kind of go because he really and truly desires to be there, to be playing football at the next level at Michigan State, a school such as MSU, which has been a proven winner now for over a decade, a decade plus, with Mark D'Antonio as the head man in East yeah. Lansing. And Spencer, you know, back to Dwan Mathis, not to harp upon this too much, but wanted to get your thoughts on him flipping his commitment from Michigan State to Ohio State. I mean, I don't know. Like, Dewan, Dewan is like my brother, man. I love him. Um, I don't really got too much to say. I mean, like I told him before anything happened, I'm just like, look, man, just do what's best for you and – I mean, this is a very pivotal decision based on your life for the next couple of years. So, I mean, do what's best for you. That's all I can say. I mean, because this is a business. So, and, uh, just pray about it. Uh, talk to your family and just do you. I mean, it's nothing bad. I mean, I hope you do good wherever you go. And hopefully he could pursue his dreams, too, to hit the league. That's what it's all about. So. Mm -hmm. And in the recruiting process, you have to speak with your family, right, and your closest family yeah. members and friends. And I have to believe that was a part of your recruiting process, right, and a reason why you chose Michigan State as well at the end of the day. Yeah. And now let's transition to Wald Lake Western football. This has been a dominant state powerhouse for years and years. But you have a new headman now in Alex Grignot, who comes from South Lyon. He was the offensive coordinator at South Lyon. What do you know about your new headman at Wald Lake Western? Uh, he, he really turned the program around for the week he's been here. Uh, everybody's been coming together as a team. There's been no ego. There's been none of that. Um, it's just a new. It's just a new atmosphere. We go in there. We work hard for the amount of time, and he works hard with us. He's a young coach, jumping around, getting everybody fired up, and that's and that's what we need. So, I mean, he's a great coach. Knows what he's talking about, and and is uh, a players' coach. Everybody loves him. So. I think we move it into the right direction. 
But you are losing a legendary figure on the sidelines in Mike Zadebski, who spent 20 years as a head man at Wald Lake Western, 30 years when you include his you know, assistant coaching time at Wald Lake Western, all those years as a teacher, as a coach. He won a state title, a D1 state title in 1999. So how big of a loss is Coach Z from the sidelines at Wald Lake Western moving forward and specifically into this 2018 season? Um, I mean, he, he was a big loss. He was a big loss. But, I mean, like I said, uh, at the end of the day, I just believe that players go out there and play. I mean, the coach can't really go out there and play for us, so we got to do it. Last year, we wasn't really a team, and that's the biggest thing. You could draw up the X's and O's and do all of that, but if you're not a team, at the end of the day, it's, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? We had guys, uh, everybody was on their own path and just doing them, but – this year with the new coach, everybody's together. We don't care who scored, who got offers, who don't got. Like, we're a, we're a team. And that's the thing we're missing. And that's what we were missing last year, and we got it this year. So I think the sky's the limit for this team. We're going to be better than last year. So. And Spencer, I hate to bring it up here and do this to you, but you lost in the first round of the state playoffs last year, being upset by Livonia Franklin, who made it all yeah. the way to the D2 state final, eventually losing to my alma mater and Warren De LaSalle. So I was proud to see that result. I know you guys weren't the most proud to see the result that happened to you guys in the first round once again of the state playoffs. So how much does that loss still weigh on you and your teammates? And what do you and your teammates have to do to prevent that from happening a second straight year? Uh, I mean, we... Man, we hear that all the time, everywhere, uh, Twitter, all that. Everybody always talk about it. Oh, y'all lost first round, first round. Uh, we see it, but we know why it happened. We beat our, we beat ourselves that game. You know what I mean? So we, it's not like they outplayed us. Like we were the best team. I believe that we were the better team. And I mean, it's nothing we could do, uh, but just learn from that situation and. What we need to do to fix it is, like I said, the team more. We wasn't a team last year. When somebody messed up, uh, I mean, everybody was pointing fingers. It, it just we, we just weren't a team last year. We just wasn't a team. This year we're a team, so we we already know what we need to do. We're going to come together as a team and win, and win games. Because at this point, with everything going on with us not having a coach and – or the old coach leaving, like we, we're starting, and then a, our player died, former player died, like we're coming together as a team, man. We, we don't let everybody. And it's all about the team, isn't it? I mean, team before player. Team performance before individual performance. And a team that has really emphasized that and I think epitomized that mentality is Nova Detroit Catholic Central in years past. A state powerhouse at the D1 level who you guys have to go up against in week one at the Zenith Prep Kickoff Classic at Wayne State. I'll be there, by the way. So I'll be there. I'll see you playing in that game. And what are you looking forward to in terms of that matchup? I know it's very premature to look ahead to that game when you haven't even started practice yet yourself at Wald Lake Western. But how can a game like that in totality get you battle-tested and ready for the rest of the season and specifically for the state playoffs? Oh, man, that's a, that's a, that's a big game. Uh, it'll get us ready because... We can see where we're at with an actual good team. I'm not trying to disrespect our league, but, I mean, I can't. CC's not, no one in our league is as good as CC. So, I mean, we'll get battle tested in that. But I don't I don't want to do how we did last year, how we beat the best team in the state week one, and then we just got content and didn't go harder. This year, I think we just go, after, after we win week one, we just going to go harder and go harder and go harder. That's what we need to do. And what does Spencer Brown, you yourself, Spencer, have to do to become an even better all-around O-lineman this season and beyond as well? Um, what do I got to do? Um, I think I got to be more of a vocal leader towards our team because our team, our team, we need leaders. Last year we didn't have no leaders, so me and Sam going to step up and lead the team. And I'm going to just keep working hard. I'm not, I'm not worried about no rankings, offers, all that. I'm just trying to work hard, be the better person, on and off the field, and go go 110% every time I'm on the field. I, I don't want to lose no reps this year. And whatever we do, whether that's sprinting, um, jogging, anything, I don't want to lose no reps. So that's, that's my deal. That's how I think I'm going to get better and lead my team to the state championship. 
Well, let's pivot now to a guy that always gives 110%, or at least I think so, and a guy that I think you like as well, LeBron James, who has a big decision to make this offseason. Where do you see him landing, Spencer? Man, uh, I want to say L.A. I mean, I think he's going to go to L.A., but I think the league is not going to let that happen because they need somebody on the East. So LeBron not on the East, then is is horrible. So I think he might realistically. I could say two things: either Philly or Philly or the Lakers. But I've seen something where they said uh, his son enrolled in L- some school in L.A., so it might be a uh, may, might be a hint to where he's going to L.A. So. How about Paul George also joining forces with LeBron in L.A.? I mean, how good of a Lakers squad would that be? And would that team be able to dethrone the Warriors atop the Western Conference and atop the NBA in totality? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I know it's a tough one, Spencer. Yeah, I don't know. The old Paul George, maybe, I don't think he's the same. But I think, I don't know. I mean, I just everything got to come together. Like I said, as a team, I mean, it could happen with to where Brown could break up the whole team, and he's been a team. So that's another thing. I don't know. Spencer, you are such a LeBron fan, and LeBron's been in Cleveland for so long. That's the team that all LeBron fans root for, and you've you've kind of bought into Cleveland. If he changes teams, are you now rooting for that team, or do you still root for the Cavs and LeBron? Uh, <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with LeBron there. So LeBron goes to the Pistons. I'm a Pistons fan. All right. So. <laughs> now, are you a Pistons fan at all? I mean, I'm just trying to ask you and find out because I know you live here in Michigan. I'm thinking you should be a Pistons fan, at least a little bit. I know you love LeBron and the Cavaliers subsequently, but still, any love for the hometown Detroit Pistons? Yeah, I love the, I love the Pistons, man. I love the Blake show. Uh, we got Drummond, Stanley. Yeah, I think we sweet. I think we got a good little team. We need some new – we got some new coaches now. So. Yeah, new yep. head coach. Dwayne Casey going to change up things. I mean – how many wins could they get, Spencer? I mean, over or under, let's say 49 and a half from the Pistons this season. At least, they should at least hit the playoffs this year. That's okay. the goal. At least playoffs this year. I like the optimism. I'm all with it. And you know what? The coaching staff, uh, everyone at the Pistons, that's their goal. They want to hit it this year. With new coaching, they're not hitting this slow motion at all. The goal is to win. Dwayne Casey, is, a, is that's his mentality. I'm sure most coaches, but they just weren't conservative at all about their predictions about where the Pistons would be this coming season, Vito. Yeah, they're trying to go for it, Spencer, big time, and you're always trying to go for it on the football field. Now, how about off the football field? What is one unique thing about you that many people do not know? Uh, off the field, what people don't know, I don't know. I'm just a great guy, man. I just love to have fun with my friends and family, go out, go do stuff, and just have a good time because that's what life's about. Well, you know what? You sound like a great guy. It's always been great talking to you in the past and on the airwaves for this episode of Sports Talk Soup. And best of luck to you this fall at Wald Lake Western, and keep going after it and getting it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. No problem. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. So, Vito, we've got a MSU commit who supports whatever team LeBron is at. And you know what he put in that mix? If he comes to the Pistons, I'm a Pistons fan. Although Just he like says that. he supports Pistons. And he does, yeah. Either way. But I don't I don't know if there could be any shakeup in the league. Like, is there any way for LeBron to come to the Pistons? I never even thought about it in mm-hmm. detail because I just I don't know. I just didn't look at it as as a possibility. Do can we even afford LeBron James? Like Hell no. Uh, <laughs> we cannot afford him. No cap room for the guy because of all these bloated and albatross contracts. Blake Griffin, most notably, making like $30 million plus annually for another few seasons mm-hmm. coming up. Way too much money in the books with him. Andre yeah. Drummond, max contract player. Reggie Jackson got overpaid by Stan Van Gundy as well. All these dudes overpaid because of one name, SVG who should be, what have I said in the past, should be on Law & Order, SVU with Blake. They should take their talents there to TV and get the heck out of Motown for good. Now, Stephen Gundy is out of Motown for good, and good God for the Pistons. But Blake Griffin still is around for all these years, and with all this money dragging down the Pistons roster and franchise in totality moving forward for the next few seasons at least, and now they can't add any pieces to, well, build around Blake to try to 
win and make a competitive team that wins a first round series, a second round series maybe, gets to the Eastern Conference Finals, wins the Eastern Conference. They are so far away. They are light years away from even coming <laughs> close to being competitive enough and relevant enough to make an Eastern Conference run, at least to the Eastern Conference Finals, Blair. Well, Vito, what I will say is you say that they're so far away, and one of the things they addressed during the Dwayne Casey press conference, which happened, what, like a week after they yeah, actually announced him. Yeah, that was weird, him, too. Yeah. Um, well, apparently a lot of the team, they practice in L.A. in the off season, And Tom, he has a home in L.A. It just made sense to go out to L.A. So that was kind of the, the um, reason for that. But I will say that Dwayne Casey feels like he has the tools necessary to work with to make the Pistons successful and a playoff contending team this season. And and uh, management also believes that it's okay that they didn't have a draft pick in the first round. They feel confident in the pieces they have uh, and and the the younger guys that are coming up, Luke Kennard, Henry Ellison, Stanley, they feel really confident in that core group of guys along with Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond. So what would you guys say to that? Or what would you, Vito? Well, I kind of have to ask, asking you, I'm going to answer your question kind of, but Luke Kennard has to develop. Stanley Johnson has to further develop. And Dwayne Casey now has to get the best out of these younger guys. Mm -hmm. And if these guys want to become part of the core for the Pistons moving forward for the long term, they have to keep developing and become better all around ball players too. Where Luke Kennard now has to become more of just more than just a guy that shoots the three ball very effectively. Because he shot it like, what, 42 percent from three-point range this past season as a rookie. So, had a nice rookie campaign, but when you draft him as high as the Pistons did in the first round, Kennard looks like right now a guy that you can just pick up via free agency on the cheap. Kennard therefore has to become better. Better on defense. Can he guard guys on the wing? Is he quick enough to stay in front of them? Big enough as well and fleet of foot with that being said. If not, he's an albatross or a liability, let's say, defensively. So you have to hope Dwayne Casey has Pistons head man moving forward for the next, what, five years? Got a retirement package pretty much for himself. He's already, what, 60 or something. So good for him. Deserves all that money because of what he did, you know, in Toronto. Yeah, Had a excellent. reputable name and a tenure in Toronto and should have never been fired. And I kind of like really quick how he, like, he kind of took or, you know, said a little dig, got a little dig in there about the Raptors, about them firing him at the NBA Awards. It just happened this past Monday. Took a little dig at the Raptors for firing him because he won Coach of the Year. Yes, won it did. from his peers, won it at the NBA Awards show, and deserve it hugely. Did yes. time. Uh, did big time because he won 59 games. Mm -hmm. He got the number one seed. And look at what he did with the Raptors. That was a franchise record for a single season in terms of wins for a single season with the 59 Ws. Raptors have never been close to that good or relevant in the past until he got there in Toronto. Yeah, they really feel like, I think, uh, the biggest obstacle was LeBron James and the Cavs. So I don't know where their patience was with continually losing to him in the playoffs, but I think he's an excellent coach. And you know how you talk about getting uh, star talent kind of later on in the draft? It was a steal. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we, we didn't get the high draft pick, but we got a steal in coaches. Really, I feel like that way uh, with Dwayne Casey. And I have a steal in co-host right here. Oh, a steal thank and you. a co-host <laughs> in terms of you, Blair. Always co-hosting with you. you. Let me ask you. So we have LeBron that's probably gonna, you know, sign before the fourth. That's the report. But forget about LeBron really quick. How about you and what you're doing for the fourth of July? Any, you know, big time fun stuff planned for yourself? Well, you know what? Fourth of July, I've got a couple of events I have to work, so I'll be working, but after the 4th, because the 4th of July falls on Wednesday Smack this year. Smack dab in the middle of the week. Kind of stinks mm -hmm. for all of us that maybe want to take a trip or do something yeah, fun, it's a right? Yeah, oddball holiday this year. So we're going to celebrate the Saturday after at my grandmother's house. And she's 90 and still hosting us. And nice. it's exciting. She, she cooks. She doesn't cook very often. So when she does, oh, you better be there. Awesome. I, I should try to like get you a plate or something. Let me know what she's yes. cooking. Maybe I'll stop over because of you what can. she's cooking. But what is she cooking? What does she like cooking, I guess? Well, too? she does really well. I don't know what's going to be on the menu, but definitely barbecue. And she cooks greens really okay. well, collard greens, and she cooks a sweet potato pie. I don't mm. even like sweet potato oh, sounds pies. Sounds good. And you eat I it don't. because she and makes I it? And I eat like hers because she makes it. Yeah, it's like good. I don't eat a lot, but to get a person to eat something who doesn't like it, like that's that's good. That's huge. Yeah. Now, I couldn't eat a lot myself because I'm watching my figure for the Olympics. Oh, okay. The Summer Games in 2020. I don't know what I'm going to compete in yet. Okay. But anyways. What's what ideal? I, I know. <laughs> what's ideal for me? I don't know what the heck is ideal for me, but I'll look into it later on and uh, keep training. Not really training. But... <laughs> 
barbecue is great. A great barbecue, well, it's great for the summer, right? On the 4th of July, what's better than that? Then maybe drinking a little bit or drinking whatever what your about preferred beverage is. What about barbecue cooked with beer? See, that's a Ooh, hybrid mix. That we, sounds really good. That's yes. a, an extreme hybrid mix. So then mix. you'll have to have some yeah. because that's how my uncle cooks it. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Very nice. Now, yeah. what kind of barbecue sauce does your grandma use, by the way? It's made. Is it spicy or is it? It's like a, a sweet savory with some spices in it. Okay. So, we'll we'll have to see if we can get you by. But wait a minute, you're you you gotta like share. What are you doing for what the am holiday? I, I haven't I haven't answered that yet. Well, what I'm doing is probably nothing really that extravagant. But <laughs> I'm actually going to my dad's side of the family to a cousin's house to spend the Fourth of July to watch some fireworks and later at night might see a buddy or two and go hang out with him and his other buddies, some mutual friends of mine and. We'll have a ball, kind of a blast, but it is a Wednesday night, and I have to work the next day or do something for work, and that's Mm -hmm. why it stinks. It's smack dab in the middle of the week. Yeah, so you better be careful on how many beers you have. Right, for everybody, please conserve (laughs) and watch how much you drink, definitely. Oh, for sure. Yes. For sure. And now, how much more time do we got really quick? We got about two minutes and 57 seconds, guys. You can hang in with us that much longer? I hope you can. I got something else for you really quick. Comerica Park, where the Tigers play, obviously. Mm -hmm. What do you think about something that the park could add to further entice fans to come to games, especially when they're lackluster, as lackluster as they are right now, and for probably the next two to three years as a ball club? Oh, that's a really interesting question. I mean, they have a lot at the park already, Vito. I mean, you, you mentioned fireworks. Don't they do fireworks like every Friday night They do every game? single Friday night, and every they're pretty Friday... darn good fireworks, yeah, too. Yeah, those are great fireworks. Yeah. So if you guys haven't been out or didn't know that, then that's an excellent night to go and take the family if it's, you know, not scorching hot yeah. and just relax your you know, and do it that. Um, aside from fireworks, I don't know. Maybe they could get some really unique food ben- vendors there. Uh, or if they have, for example, maybe a traveling vendor. So they have a new headline chef or restaurant come to set out games. Maybe the games that aren't selling as well. Maybe they package together like dinner and the ballpark instead of dinner and a movie. And if you guys do that, that, then I want to be invited and I want to get paid for my uh, marketing. Your great marketing recommendation. I like that very much. How about new beers? More beer. How about kegs? For All sure. throughout the ballpark. That would be new and different, <laughs> totally unique, and a recommendation from me, Big V here. So please pay me some money if you do go forward with that idea. Another one really quick is Club Miggy. Now, actually, I have to attribute this to John Macaroon okay. from the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. We were talking about making a club there, like on the rooftop of Comerica, mm-hmm. where they have this new Amsterdam bar right now. Well, what you could do is you could call it Club Miggy. He came up with a name for it, and Miguel Cabrera would be there all the time dancing his behind off, <laughs> and it'd be fun to mingle with him a little bit, wouldn't it, as Tigers fans, too? Yeah, that'd be really cool. I think so. I don't know, though. Th- those guys play so many games. Yes. And the games are so long. Where are they, they, I don't know if they get the energy to make it up there unless they do an additional night outside of game night. Could you? Can you expect that from a player, like well, to show up and? Miguel could find the time right now. He's on the DL for the remainder of the season. And he's a guy yeah. that in the past has liked to party and liked to drink a little bit too much. Oh well, let's get it going. Right? We let's could really have a ton of fun there. Maybe at Club Miggy. Let's call Club Miggy, have a club at Comerica, and let's go and do that, you and I, Blair, together. And that would be really fun, wouldn't it be? I think for everybody involved there. <laughs> that would be totally awesome. If you see the video uh, during the channel, make sure you guys tell us your comments on what you're doing for the holiday and how Comerica Park can improve for the fans. You can find Vito on Twitter where? At Vito Jerome. And you? You can find me on Twitter at Blair on Air. And Spencer one, Brown. And Blair on Air 1. Blair on one. Air 1. Spencer yes. Brown, thanks to you, man. That's a big dog right there that's getting it done on the football field. Good luck to him this fall at Wald Lake Western. Yes. Adios. Bye, guys. Thank you.